My sister gave birth to her daughter a few weeks ago. We're not that close anymore, but at one time we were. But she's an idiot to my wife and I can't stand by that, so we're low contact. I don't call her and I don't answer if she calls me, but I will see her when it's something family related and I will be civil and polite to her typically. When I say she's an idiot to my wife, it's because she's so petty with her. My wife is Irish. She didn't grow up in the US and only moved here in her 20s, so she has a very strong connection to her home. She has a strong accent and her name is Irish and she's very protective over people saying it correctly and rightly so in my opinion. My wife's name is Kira for those who wonder. My sister poked fun at how my wife said certain things like tomatoes. She told my wife she was saying it wrong because my wife could stand up for herself and would just roll her eyes if my sister made a bigger deal out of it. My sister got annoyed. So she started to make a point to say my wife's name like we would say it with that spelling. She told my wife she's in America now, so she should accept her name being said like that. I told my sister she was acting like a kid and to cut it out. The final straw was when we were expecting our first child, and my sister told us we better not pick an Irish name and my wife better not teach our kid to say things weird. I told my sister she was so damn ignorant it was crazy because different parts of the world will have different accents and different names for things. I also told her my children would be half Irish and if we wanted to give them Irish names, it was nothing to do with her. And we went low contact after that. So now my sister has a daughter and what did she name her daughter? Kira. But said in the way we would say it. She made a big point to send me and my wife an announcement about it and the name. My wife specifically came with a pronunciation. I didn't get that, nor did anyone else in the family. We saw her on Saturday and she smirked the whole time and loudly said her daughter's name for the two hours we were in her presence. Others in the family told her she didn't need to repeat the name over again, but she carried on. She told our parents that her daughter loved hearing her name and that she loved hearing a phonetically correct name. When we were leaving, my sister tried to approach my wife. I stepped in between them and told my sister she was a petty brat and I felt sorry for her kid being named to spite someone else. I told her she couldn't be more of a child if she truly tried to be. She was blowing up my phone all Sunday and yesterday, angry that I'd said that to her. I didn't reply. Am I the idiot? What the heck? The poor child. Named that to be what? Some kind of sweet revenge? This is so messed up. I would block her just so she could be all smirking by herself. Or better, call and thank her that you never realized that she loved your wife and you so much that she would name her child after the two of you. The same name as your wife but with an American accent. So it also represents you. Just to show her, huh, you can't anger us with that, we see it as some form of honor. I think that would drive her furious and maybe overthink the whole name stuff. Wow, she was named out of spite. This kid is going to hate her mother, and if she grows up to be just as vocal about it as her mother, she will let everyone know. Everyone. You don't need to do a thing. Your sister is the grandmaster at messing up her life. Let her do it, then sit back with a grin. The best revenge is to live your best life. It will be hilarious when the sister's future rebellious teen learns of her name's ethnic origins and starts telling the family to pronounce it the Irish way. If I were your wife, I might not go to no contact just to enjoy seeing it happen and make sure the niece learns how to correctly pronounce wife's name. I, 36 female, am a neurologist and I absolutely love my patients and my job. There's no greater honor in life than being able to help others. The road to my medical degree was challenging and it was paved with many rejections. I was a troubled teen in high school and I didn't get accepted into any colleges my senior year. I had to work my way up, starting with remedial classes at my local community college. When I finally got into medical school at 26, I was absolutely thrilled. I met my husband, 37, in my third year of medical school and we've been married for four years now. My husband works in marketing and I make three times his salary. From the beginning of our relationship, I was very upfront that I was unsure about having biological children. My dream was always to adopt from foster care, and my husband seemingly understood this. However, after his best friend had a baby boy last year, he pressed me on having children. I was initially very against this idea because I was just beginning my career. I wanted to wait a few more years before revisiting the topic of children. In August of last year, I found out I was unexpectedly pregnant due to a condom breaking during intimacy. I was initially considering an abortion, but after many heartfelt conversations with my husband, we decided to keep the baby and he would quit his job and stay home until our daughter was old enough to start preschool. Several factors went into our decision to have him stay home with our daughter. 
I make significantly more money than he does, so it makes more financial sense. I'm in the first few years of my career as an attending physician. After four years of med school and a four-year residency, I'm just starting to practice on my own, whereas my husband has been in his career for 15 years. I was very clear that I had absolutely zero desire to stay home and be a housewife. I respect stay-at-home mothers, but my work is my life and I would go crazy at home all day. This isn't a lifestyle I want whatsoever. Finally, I'm uncomfortable putting my child in daycare until she's old enough to express herself verbally. Our daughter is still a young infant, and I'm preparing to return to my practice in a few weeks. This weekend, I left my husband alone with our daughter while I attended a medical conference out of state. The conference was amazing, but my husband began acting weird when I returned home. Today, when our daughter was napping, I asked him to tell me what was wrong. He broke down and said he didn't think he could do this. He expressed how trapped, alone and overwhelmed he felt all weekend. He wants me to extend my maternity leave and is talking about getting his job back. This made me freak out and I asked, well, what will we do with our daughter now? He responded by suggesting I leave my practice and work from home. I said absolutely not and he suggested daycare. At this point, I just lost it and screamed, if I knew you were going to back out of your promise to take care of our daughter, I would have never had your child. I know I completely overreacted and I would never trade our daughter for anything. I love her so much, but I am so upset with my husband and I'm unsure how to move forward. Not the idiot. You express boundaries and rules and he crossed them. Stick to your boundaries. If he's unwilling, consider how important that boundary is to you and how far you're willing to enforce it. A child isn't something one can be so flippant over, and I changed my mind is unacceptable if he's the one who pushed for it in the first place. Also, economically, it makes no sense. Opie's husband has all my sympathy for going into this convinced he'd be a happy stay-at-home dad, trying it and then realizing he felt trapped, alone and overwhelmed. But why would he want that for OP? The obvious solution is getting a nanny or an au pair, especially given they can afford it. Suggesting OP quit her job to be a stay-at-home is a complete butt move. This is it exactly. He felt it was terrible being home alone with the baby, but now he wants her to do it. That's what doesn't make sense to me. People need to stop having kids as long as partner does most of the work. In the long run, you can't plan for that. You also shouldn't have to be talked into having a child. You want one or you don't. It's not explicitly stated, but it sounds like OP didn't want a bio kid and only had one for her husband. What was OP planning to do if her husband got severely sick, injured or died before their daughter could go to preschool? None of this is smart. Everyone's the idiot here. My parents have a lot of kids. They always wanted a big family and were unprepared for how hard that would be. I'm, nearly adult male, the oldest of ten, and my parents have relied on me for so long that I don't remember a time when I wasn't treated like a third adult in the house. My siblings range from mid-teens down to preschool age. My parents are still technically able to have more kids too, because neither is 40 yet, and it scares me, I won't lie. We already struggle so much with 10 of us, and I know it would be worse if they added more, especially since I'm so close to moving out. In our house, we have a boy's room, a girl's room, and our parents' bedroom. We all sleep on these tiny damn bunk beds in order to fit everyone in. Nobody gets brand new clothes, it's all thrift stores for me and the oldest of my sisters, and our younger brothers and sisters get our hand-me-downs. It was expected I would step up by the time I was in kindergarten. I had to make my and my siblings' beds, tidy up after my younger siblings, stop my younger siblings from climbing into things, and clean the floors. Over time, more chores were added to my list. Helping to cook, babysitting, even when I was too young, really, helping with homework and holding siblings' hands when we went grocery shopping so they wouldn't run off, cleaning the bathrooms, cleaning both boys' and girls' bedrooms, Tidying up if we were having guests, especially if anyone had friends over. My siblings weren't really given chores, and I was basically doing just as much as my parents around the house. My siblings rely on me for too much, from driving them places to picking them up from places to giving them permission for stuff. My parents let me give permission where I know they would. They expect me to buy them stuff. They come to me more than our parents and sometimes come to me after our parents if they don't like what our parents say. They get cranky whenever I try to get them to help, and our parents won't back me up, so they have never done any kind of chore or helped out at all. They get so mad when I ask. They say I'm not mom and dad, but then they also won't go to mom and dad for this stuff most of the time. My parents started freaking out because I'll be 18 soon, and they know I plan to move out. 
I also work part-time, and that gets relied on to help financially. Between that and all I do around the house, it finally dawned on my parents that I wouldn't be around in a few more months. They started word vomiting all this on me and I told them they need to learn to live without me because it's not my job to be the third adult in the house anymore. They told me I'll still be a part of the family and I can't just abandon them. I said I will not support the household after I turn 18 because it won't be my job. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Make sure you have all your papers, license, social security card, passport, birth certificate, etc. safe. Also, keep all your email and banking passwords safe and secret. Moving out, stop paying rent, etc. is 100% natural and normal. It's what millions of people your age do, so don't feel guilty. Also, lock up your credit so they can't open accounts in your name. Yeah, what they're doing is parentification and it's not fair to any of you. I'm proud of you for your steadfast determination to get out. I worry that your parents won't suddenly decide to step up and take adequate care of their children and instead lean more heavily on your younger siblings. That doesn't mean you should have to clip your wings and stay homebound, but if you can, make sure that all of your siblings know that they don't have to live this way forever. I, 29 female, recently lost dad to a terminal tumour. Dad lived abroad with stepmom Jenny and our sisters, teens. Bro, 27, flew out when he could, and I worked overtime to see him. I worked seven days a week to pay for my simple wedding so Dad could come. Four weeks before the wedding, Dad said he couldn't fly. Fiancé offers to drive several thousand miles to pick Dad up, but he's too ill. Bro filmed the wedding, and I flew out after with the tape to see Dad. Bro spent his last Christmas with him. We flew out for his funeral and many times after to see Jenny and our sisters. We never got on with Jenny, but his cancer brought us together to realize what was important, or so I thought. Jenny was our stepmom since we were 10 and 8. She'd slag off mom and be nasty to bro. I defend bro. Dad stayed away as they hated conflict. I disliked Jenny even when I left home. When she met my now husband but then boyfriend of six months, she spent two hours telling him how awful I was. I couldn't say anything as in a foreign country with nowhere else to go. When Dad got ill, we supported and cared for him and each other until now. A company contacted me regarding Dad's will. Jenny told me he didn't have a will and I never questioned her getting everything as they were married. I asked Jenny for a copy, but there was no response. Brother calls me confused and upset. He'd called Jenny to ask what was happening with the will and pension. They spoke nicely for 50 minutes, but when he asked, Jenny flipped and screeched. Don't you dare to try make a claim, you will ruin this family. I'll have to get a job sooner. Jenny didn't work, understandably, when Dad was ill, but he died over a year ago and she hasn't worked since. Our sisters are independent, they cook, walk to school and have a key. She could work if she wanted to, and she did work full-time before Dad was ill. Jenny messages calling us greedy, says how traumatic Dad's illness was for her and our sisters, as if it wasn't for us and that if we took the money we were stealing as adult children, it's odd to think we're entitled to anything from Dad. I nearly cry when I see her message. Bro says this whole situation is odd and believes Jenny is hiding our inheritance. Still haven't seen the will, so I don't know if we've been left anything. If Jenny had come to us and asked for our inheritance if she was struggling, we would have helped. But all the lying, there's no will and you're not in it, and then not showing us the will makes me want to know what she's hiding. I found out that where Dad died, all children are legally entitled to a share of his estate, no matter what the will says. Am I the idiot if we claim what's ours in the will? Am I the idiot if we claim the share of Dad's estate for us and our sisters? I promised Dad, as the eldest, that I'd look after my siblings. Not the idiot. Definitely look into it. Also, consider claiming life insurance and pension benefits. Many of those are legally directed to the family, and that includes you and your siblings. Get yourself an attorney so they can start asking the questions and getting the lowdown. Given that a company called you and Jenny says he doesn't have a will, I'd like to know if your dad named you and your brother as beneficiaries of his life insurance. If so, and if it's the same Met life type setup that my mother had when she passed, nobody else is going to get that money except the named beneficiaries. Jenny wouldn't be able to touch your part of it at all. Her chunk, if any, would be in a different account than yours, and your making a claim has nothing to do with her, call the company back and see what's up. Hold up. For starters, what kind of company is calling you about a will? Is it a creditor or debt collector? In that regard, you really do need to get this estate issue legally resolved. 
not just for the sake of your claim, but to see if there are creditors that may vie for part of the estate as well. If he had a will and left something to you, you should have it. Sounds like Jenny just wants to be a freeloader. My father's girlfriend is very active on social media. She usually makes at least two Instagram posts a day. I'm sure she's trying to become an influencer. While I don't care much for that, one thing I've noticed is that almost every picture she posts is photoshopped in some way. Sometimes she makes her waistline smaller, other times she airbrushes her face. Sometimes she does both. I don't know how noticeable it is to others, but my husband and I can always tell. My birthday was this weekend. A few months ago I had a baby and I haven't had time to do much. So last week my friends and family threw me a surprise party to celebrate both my birthday and my first year as a mom. I later made a post on Instagram thanking everyone, including several pictures from the party. A few hours later, my father called me to ask if I could add a picture featuring his girlfriend to the post I'd made. I was frustrated, but I deleted it and reposted it with a picture of me, my husband, our baby, my father and his girlfriend. It was the only one I had of her at the party. Hours after that, his girlfriend sent me a Photoshop version of the picture and asked if I could replace the one I'd posted. She'd changed her waistline, retouched everyone's faces, and whitened our teeth. I said no. While she's free to post whatever she wants on her socials, I don't want an obviously photoshopped picture on mine. She argued the picture I'd posted would clash with the ones on her page, and she didn't want her followers to see it like that. I reminded her that my account is private, and the only people who will see my posts are friends and family who already know what she looks like. When she kept insisting, I told her that either she accepted the unedited picture or I'd remove it from the post entirely. My father wants me to humour her. He says it would take little to no effort on my part to replace the picture. I'm aware of that, I just don't want to do it. I didn't even want to include the picture in the first place. I only did it because they wanted me to. I'm busy this week and dealing with this has become very annoying. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She's free to post whatever Photoshop version of reality she wants, but on yours, you can post the real photos with her thick waist and yellow teeth. It's your wall, not hers. It's private, so she doesn't have to worry about her followers seeing it, unless they are the handful of people who follow you both. She argued the picture I'd posted would clash with the others on her page. Yeah, reality has a nasty habit of clashing with abject fantasy. Make sure you tag her. You already humoured them by deleting your original post and featuring her. You're not obligated to post fake Photoshop versions of your family just because his girlfriend is trying to portray an authentic version of herself online. OP, your mistake here is giving in and posting the picture in the first place. If your dad wants her featured in pictures of the event, he can post them to his social media. It's not your job to further her influencer career. And honestly, if it's as bad as you describe, she won't succeed anyway. I would have a talk with your dad. Set some boundaries and guidelines now.